Good morning, D-Squad family. Good morning, guys. Hey, it's pretty early this morning, um, but I wanted to put a video up. I wanted to talk to you guys. I wanted to talk to my family this morning. The Lord woke me up about 5 o'clock this morning, and um, I was excited when he woke me up this morning. You know, it just it, it just does something to my heart when God wakes me up because I know it's time to spend time with him. It's time that he that's he wants to just be me and him. It's quiet, everybody is sleeping, um, and I could hear him and I could praise and worship him and I could talk to him and I can lay everything that I need to lay down before him. But first I want to say uh thank God for you, each and every one of you. And uh, I thank God. I thank God for you. I truly do. I uh, pray that your day today will be blessed. I pray that on this Friday, God will give you rest and he will give you peace and joy in all that you need on today. I pray God will give you just what you need. If you need healing, if you need deliverance, if you need strength, uh, whatever you need, I pray that God will deliver it unto you today. So the reason I decided to go ahead and make this video is that I want to speak to somebody that's that's going to watch this video that needs to really hear this. And um, I want you to know first and foremost that God loves you. He loves you so much. He loves you unconditionally. He loves you with the everlasting love. He loves you with the love that no one can take that love away from you. Even right where you are right now, God loves you and you need to know that. You know, um, as I was sitting and just meditating and just praying and talking to God, you know, the Holy Spirit was just dropping things in my spirit. And there are a lot of people that are living in this world right now, believers and non-believers, who feel that they have to be a certain way in order for Jesus to love them. And that's not true. For a long time, I used to think that you know, the way that I saw how people, you know, react in praise and and worship and talking and dressing and and, and their their way of, of be being a Christian I thought was that's how you're supposed to do it. But, you know, I learned that we're not all the same. We're all different and God does different things in each and every one of us. I may be where I am today with God and you may be uh still growing in God, or you may be past me in knowing and knowledgeable in the things of God, but that's okay because each one of us, God will, he will teach us. God will train us. He will raise us up. He will, he will show us the way, but we first must acknowledge him. We must, we must first seek him because how can you know which way to go if you are not seeking God? It is very important and imperative that we seek the ways of the Lord because at the end of the day, God is in control of your life if you will allow him and your circumstances and situations will change if you trust God. You know, at our women's uh, breakfast, my 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 topic is the process, and um, which is going to be amazing. You guys know I'll be posting that, but we just have to know that God is able to do great things. He's able to move mountains, and He's able to solve problems. He's able to heal diseases and sick. He's able to do everything, but we have to trust Him. But I want you to know that you don't have to be like the next person. You don't have to think that, you know, I have to shout this way or I have to praise this way or I have to walk this way in order for God to accept you. No, God accepts you as you are. Give him your true self because God don't want no phony. He knows. I mean, you can't fool God. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says that um, they praise me with their lips, God says, but their hearts are far from me. And you don't want to be one that's praising God with your lips and your heart is far from God. God knows. He knows your, your praise if it's not real. He knows. And the word of God says me, we must worship God in spirit and in truth. How do you do that? You have to first be born so that the spirit can come and live inside of you. Accept Jesus. Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and the Spirit will come and dwell in you. And then it says, uh, worship Him in spirit and truth. The truth is the Word of God. It's the Bible, guys. We got to 
pick up the Bible. You got to read the Bible. You know, spend some time with God. We spend so much time watching TV. We spend so much time doing all other kinds of entertainment to entertain ourselves. But we need to take that time and turn that time around and give God that time because we're wasting time. Amen. We're wasting time and we don't want to be, um, we don't want to be left behind when Jesus comes and raptures up his children. We want to make sure we catch that. We want to make sure that we are rapture ready. And, and in the way you get rapture ready, you got to go ahead and sell your soul, sell out to God, you know, just surrender. Just tell God, I surrender. Tell God, I surrender. That is the most important thing that you can do for God is to surrender. Amen. And and a lot of times we say that, but we don't do that. And we need to, you know, uh, I remember there was a time when I felt like I just wasn't good enough. I felt like I ain't going nowhere with this. You know, I'm stuck. I've been here for years. I've been saved for a long time and I'm still in the same predicament. I'm still in the same situation. I love Jesus Christ. I love serving him. I love telling people about him. You know, I love it. But my mind was conditioned to try to be like everybody else. My mind was to do what they doing, do what she doing, you know, do it that way. Maybe if I do it this way, you know, no. So you have to learn to just be yourself, relax in God. Quit trying to be like the next person because you're not like the next person. Because you can see a person in church praising and worshiping God, screaming and shouting, and their hearts is not really toward God, you know. So don't even low look at the things. Sometimes when you worship God, I just close my eyes when I'm in worship because I don't want to see what everybody else is doing. I don't want to mimic what everybody else is doing. I want to give my God my my best. I want to give Him my true heart, and and that's all. That's what God is looking for. God is so simple. It's so simple. A lot of people feel like, well, I got this going on and I'm doing this and I don't want to stop doing what I'm doing. God is not, he's not asking you to stop. You catch this. He's not asking you to stop, but he's asking you to allow him to take those desires away from you and give you a new desire and a hunger and a thirst for his righteousness. You know, um, I've been this, through this sickness. God has just, I thank God for me being sick. I think, well, I'm not sick. I'm not claiming that anymore, but I thank him for the sickness that I just went through and that I'm coming out of. I thank him for that because through it, I learned some things. I got to spend time with him, you know, but don't let it be, don't let yourself have to be sick in order for you to spend time with God. Spend time with God while you feeling good, while you got it going on, while you ain't got no troubles or no worries and your bills are paid. Trust him and just experience that worship with him is even greater because let me tell you something everything that you have can be taken away from you you better ask job everything you have can be taken away from you just like that so do not let that be the reason why you don't worship god why you don't praise god why you're not in church a lot of people think oh i can just sit at home and watch church yeah you can watch church at home but the bible says that we are to be amongst other believers so that we may fellowship and and we must be up under a shepherd, which is a pastor. But, you know, pray because I know, I know, you know, I already know a lot of pastors you got to watch. But that's why it's so important to have a relationship with God so that he can order your footsteps and lead you to the right place where you should be. Amen. Where you should be, not where you think you ought to be, but where you should be. And this is where trusting God comes in. This is where believing that God, you got me where you want me to be. God, you take me to the place that you need, that you, you're you you're calling me to be at. And this is what we need to do, saints. I'm telling you, this is what we need to do, squad. You know, I need to start talking. You know, it's all fun. We're going to still have some fun, but we got to have our spirit, right? Let's do it with our spirit, right? Let's do it with our lives saved and changed in God. You know, let's do it. If God wakes you up three, four, five o'clock in the morning, it's because he wants to spend time with you give god make that sacrifice we sacrifice everything else you know so i just wanted to um you know just drop by and just just encourage you to just trust 
Don't try to be like everybody else. If so, if the next Christian is talking about you or if the next Christian is looking at you some type of way, that's not God because God is love and God doesn't look at you like that. He looks at you like you're the apple of his eye. Amen. So I love you, D-Squad. I'm going to go ahead and put this video up. It's early. It's early. It's early. It's early. But I'm going to go ahead and give y'all this morning and I'm going to leave you with the scripture, Proverbs 29 and 11. You know, read it because God knows the plans he has for you. Amen. So there's already a plan in effect. We just got to walk it. Amen. I love you, D-Squad. I will see y'all later on today in this video. We're still going to be talking about the Daniel fast. Uh, and now it's preparation time because it's almost here. Okay. So anyway, I love you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and wind it up. I say now wind it up. Here's your kids, D-Squad family.